We are back on this dingy space station that rank aroma of too many aliens being pressed together is is still present. The five of you, well, the four of you are still at liberty, wandering the station with the various wares and things that you have purchased. So we'll start with you, Captain Zeb. What are you doing? Uh, Zep. Zep. Sorry, Zep. Captain Zep. I think right now Zep is going to go look for the rest of the crew now that he's got some information. Okay, absolutely. Uh, can the four of you please all roll a d4 for me? Uh, one. What did you get, uh, Wiss? Two. Two. Shao? Two. Uh, Lexi? One. Zep? Two. Okay. Captain Zep, you come around the corner and bump into Shao and, a few moments later, Weiss. Whiz, whiz, whiz. Okay. I found you. That's that's great. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No, wait. Information. I got some information. Oh, nice. And and I have a robot, or at least half of it. Ah, good. I. Are half of it? Uh, I didn't have enough money for the rest. The working half, right? Uh, and. It's in pieces, so I don't think it's working. Uh, it was the cheapest thing I could buy. The complete one working was 3,000 credits. Well, I mean, it's a step forward. Stumbling step, but a step. Well, we have well, to get the rest soon. I've just come into some money, not 3,000 credits, but I perhaps I could help. Well, um, we can get the rest of the robot pieces. What, what did you find out, Captain? Well, I found out that we're not the only ones that have encountered this presence in that system. Oh, so the system is blocked for everyone? Apparently. Hmm. They have some kind of energy that can take out shields or something. Hmm. It's all beyond me, you know. How, how are we going to deal with it? Well, I figure we find the rest of everybody else here, get the rest of this droid put together, figure out what's on those crystals, and we'll be good. Well, so we definitely need the rest of the robots. I definitely think that's part of the plan, yeah. All right, so the three of you are heading back to the third-hand droid dealer. Absolutely genuine imitation parts. And uh, <laughs> that's where you're going. Lexi. Um, oh, sorry, Shao? Before we go, if I remember correctly, last time um, Lexi and I were close together mm -hmm. and she was trying to make a deal for a skiff. That's right. I think you overheard that from a distance. Yes. Yeah. And I was hoping to help her out with that if possible before Absolutely. we go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you can, if you point it out to everybody else, uh, you you guys can all see Lexi looking at this oh, sure. skiff. Mm. Just a moment. Lexi's over here. Let me help her. You know, I'll go over, walk over to her. I heard some, uh, some loud, some interesting noises. <laughs> What's going on over here? And can I maybe help? I think he's trying to rip my eyeballs out for this. And it hasn't even got an engine. Ask him how much he wants for it. 
Good sir, uh, I am Shao of House Sorzo, uh, renowned trading house of the um, Koran people. I'd like to make a deal with you for your skiff. He looks you up and down. His eyes open quite wide and he bows, turns and scurries away into the into the the structure that's been built into the side of the station. And a few moments later, an older looking version of the same one comes scurrying out and he bows low before you and then stands up and says, um, I was not aware that there was a prince of the house in the station. Not a prince? We would be honoured to do business with you, my lord. Uh, excellent, yes. I believe you were inquiring of the second-hand skiff. Right. We, we need use of a skiff, but one that is operational and it seems oh absolutely that... i have already fired the assistant who tried to sell you this unworkable piece of junk it's rubbish it's useless throw it away but i tried to tell him <clears throat> and he should have listened but he didn't know that you were from such a noble and wonderful trading house it is an honor for you all to be present here i have a skiff available uh, what are you planning on using it for if i might ask noble lord only so that it might be customized to your specific requirements um i'll kind of look nervously towards lexi what <clears throat> this is more your area area of expertise well it needs to be carry that, that all of us and whatever we might find on our journey so but something with a small cargo space and enough to carry the five of us I was thinking more in the lines of, do you want to have server droids aboard to serve drinks to all of your guests? Or perhaps it is the interior lining should be of uh, dakia wood. I have just recently managed to acquire a skiff of such rare beauty that it would be so to be fair i really just need not to fall apart in a sandstorm or, you know, fall to pieces as soon as it goes over a wee bump or something. I'm, I'm not bothered I about the lining. Uh, but surely he looks from you to you, Shao, and then back again. Surely you would want your master to travel in style. Have you got oh. a master as well? <laughs> Everybody knows his house is famous for their slave trade. Are you calling me a slave? Is that what he's calling? Is he calling me a slave? Is this what had happened here? Whoa. You... <laughs> no, sir. Um, so we don't deal in slavery. Um, mostly in textiles and exotic foods. I think you might have My heard something. My assistant said you were from House Chavan. They oh. are the greatest slave traders in this part of the quadrant, as a matter of fact. You are not from Shavan? No, I'm from House Sorzo. I've never heard of House Sorzo. Who the hell is House Sorzo? Oh dear. We're a, a trading house uh, that deals in mostly textiles, also some exotic foods, um, operating off planet DAC. And never heard of Planet Dak. Where the hell is Planet Dak? Sorry, Moncala, as m most prefer. Oh, yeah. You want to <laughs> buy a delivery truck? <clears throat> Essentially, yes. If you'll excuse me, I have to go and rehire someone that I've just fired. Oh. <laughs> if you want delivery vehicles, <laughs> go down that way. He turns and starts leaving. Uh, oh, I think I missed an opportunity there. I'll say to Lexi. Inside. I, I you a bit better. Uh, 
I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. To be fair, this is why my brothers never used to let me talk to people. That's why I used to just scrum around in the markets and shoot the guns. They talked, they did the talking. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a cantina, or suitable, somewhere on the station, there is a very impatient looking individual who is sitting down. She was nursing a drink. Looking up at you, Etura, where did you acquire these rubbings? You would know. I thought you sounded familiar. You were on the vessel. Yeah, and you planted a virus in our system. She raises an eyebrow and her one black gloved hand and she tightens her glove you're very bold declaring your position so openly what did you hope to gain from selling me something that i forbade you to deal with I did not specifically want to sell it to you. So you have made an error. I may have trusted the wrong person. It is my experience, she says, as she stands up, pulling herself up to her full height, which is just, just slightly, slightly taller than you, that it is often the common thief who makes the most egregious error. I'm a scholar. And yet you would peddle your findings for the highest bidder. I was looking to find an antiquarian or something. Someone who would... I don't know. Line your pockets with cash for your archaeological expedition? Yeah, somewhere along the lines. Hmm. A common thief, as I thought. Well... Now, you will tell me precisely why you were there, and you will hand over everything that you found. Is that clear? Well, I already gave those shiny little green rocks to the person who led me to you, but I don't really have much more than the rubbings. Other members of our party have the rest of the stuff. Other members of your party? Well, I don't fly a ship alone around the galaxy. She waggles two fingers and from the shadows steps two very military looking uh, individuals. They're wearing uh, this very formal black uniform that has quite sharp shoulders, very neat trim. I see. Well, perhaps it would be best if we brought all your companions here. That way they can explain the entire situation to me, and then you can run along and go and steal something from someone who's dead. Didn't you already get into our systems and get all the information you wanted? You are going to make a delightful line of inquiry. I can see. I barely have to ask you any questions, and you provide me with all of the answers I want to know. the name of your companions if you please and a brief description it will help it go a lot faster for us to find them bollocks my lips are sealed finally well we will have to have a little conversation won't we uh, take her to my ship the two get up on either side of you. One places his hand under your arm. We will see how sealed your lips are. She nods. They forcibly start marching you out. She waves her hand. The doors open and the street sounds just wash back out over you. 
and they start marching. I start screaming bloody murder. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You uh, start screaming bloody murder. You. um... They have my hands. They don't have my head. (laughs) That's true. That's true. That's entirely true. You start shouting. What are you shouting specifically? Captain Zeb. Captain Zeb. Lexi. Where's Shaw? Like just. (laughs) You are shouting out all the names of your crew at the top of your lungs. That's what you're doing. Okie dokes. That's brilliant. Um, (laughs) As you are being dragged down the street, the uh, woman that you were talking to is listening to you shout out and she, uh, she shakes her head and she's like, and she didn't even get to the ship. She summons two more goons to arrive and uh, gives them orders as you're being dragged away. I would like the four of you to please make a listen check. That's everybody except for Itura, as Itura is being dragged through this bustling spaceport. Nine. Nine for Captain Zeb. Itura? What? No, I don't. Uh, I got 16. Sorry, not a tour. My apologies. I uh, meant Lexi. 16 for Lexi. Shao? Uh, six. Wiss? Eight. Everybody is so busy trying to figure out what just happened in the skiff trade, except for Lexi, who is looking at this burnt out hulk that you almost bought or I, it's, you're not sure what's happening with the deal now <laughs> where somewhere you hear this plaintive cry of your name being shouted out over the hubbub Did you hear that? I'm sure it's a Tura Can I make out which direction it's coming from or Yes, you can. It seems to be coming from uh, the south of the station uh, towards the restaurants and cantinas and things. Uh, yes, Itura? I'm using my metal brace on my leg to make to hit anything. Oh, to and because this is a space station, I believe there's a lot of metal. <laughs> yes, yes. You kick a droid, you kick some metal. There's general commotion going on. I think it's coming from that way. We should really check it out. We can just leave this heap of junk. If you can hear her over a whole mess, yeah, we need to check it out. Do all of you follow Lexi? Uh, uh... What about about the rest of the robot? I mean, it sounded like she was in trouble. There are more robots out there. (laughs) I assure you. If it sounds like she's in trouble, I didn't hear anything, but I'll follow you. All right. The four of you make your way towards the shouting, and yes, Captain Zeb? On the, on the way there, is there anything I see that I can snatch up that makes a beeping noise? Just a small little junk piece or whatever. A beeping noise? Yes. Um... Sure. As you are passing a stall, there is someone who has um, these little, uh, they're they're small little boxes. They have a tag in them and they beep if something goes past that tag, but they can be set to beep automatically. If you, if you choose, you're going to try and steal it. Well, if we're having somebody shout in bloody murder, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, there's a small amount of of interest coming from from the general population, but it's not people people aren't running to go and check and that sort of thing. But you're going to try and steal it. Give me a sleight of hand, if you please. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. The Athorian trader didn't even see it coming. It is completely, completely yours. You have one part of a tracking uh, uh, locator. Okay. And with that, I'll rush with the rest of them. All right. 
the four of you do arrive at what looks to be like the edge of the shouting. Um, a crowd has formed, if only because they've separated from the deranged individual who's kicking and shouting at everything that is within reach. And having parted the crowds, you see from, from your vantage point, you see Atura being dragged by these two very heavily uniformed individuals uh, towards a very large airlock that you know is used for larger frigates, cruisers and that sort of thing. Are they armed? Uh, both of them do have blasters at their sides, but at the moment they are both struggling and holding on to Itura. Itura, are you trying to break free or are you just screaming, shouting and kicking? Trying to slow them down and make a commotion and <coughs> struggling, but uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm that. Okay. All right, so yeah, you're, you're being very difficult it's, uh, in, in terms of yeah. motion and that sort of thing. So it's certainly working from that perspective. I, I just think, like, Lexi would just try and run and jump on the back of one of the guys holding it to, to her and just be like, you let her go! <laughs> <laughs> just pull <laughs> away <laughs> <laughs> okay, that takes us straight into initiative. <laughs> you charge forward and jump onto them. Yeah, do that. All right, Captain Zep, what's your initiative? 20. 20. Wiss? 12. 12. Itura? 7. 7. Lexi? 17. 17. 17. Shao? 11. 11. Uh, Captain Zepp, what are you doing? Lexi has launched herself at these guards. She hasn't yet hit them, but you can see that she's pushed through the crowd and is basically running over to, to try and intercept. I'm going to take the power pack I stored earlier okay, and try to combine it with the <clears throat> beeper to try and make a fake thermal detonator. Oh, nice. Give me a bluff check. 14 plus 20. There you go. You have a beeping bomb. What are you doing with it? I'm going to hold it up and say, Hey there. All right, everybody. Nice and easy. We're going to let my friend go, or uh, I'm going to let us all go. <laughs> <laughs> There are instant shrieks <laughs> of terror from the entire station around you. There is chaos and pandemonium as, as now you create this bubble of emptiness around the four of you. Well, the three of you, because Lexi's already run forward. As people are scrambling to, to get... And you're hearing someone shout, He's got a thermal detonator! Did someone say a thermal detonator? As they're just running in all different directions to try and get away from the chaos that you have now caused, violating multiple station security laws. But that's not the point. That is what has happened there. Lexi, you have run across to the guards. The guards are kind we of. We didn't take our weapons in with us, did we? No, you weren't allowed to. It's a weapon free zone. Just, uh, I have my saber. You did try and sneak that in, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Lexi would either just try and jump on one if she could get. If she came up at them from behind, she would just try and like jump yes. on the back of one. Or like, if it's a side thing, probably just kick him in the shin with a steel toe boot or something. <laughs> Give me, a, give me a melee attack. Just give me a straight up melee attack. I'm not very good at it. She just doesn't think this. These uh, poor guards. That's just plus strength, isn't it? Uh, oh, melee yeah. attack is your base, your strength modifier, yes, and then if you have any other modifiers, yeah. Well, <clears throat> poop. <laughs> I will the one. Poodle. Oh. Poodle. Banta poodle. <laughs> you roll the one. Okay, yeah. you go rushing forward. Unfortunately, at exactly the same time as you're rushing forward to try and save your friend, thermodetonator boy over there has caused panic, and you run straight into the side of a Gamorian, which are those large green pig-like creatures, and bounce off. 
It looks down at you, it grunts, and continues to shuffle as fast as it can towards its starship, because nobody wants to be on a space station when a thermal detonator ignites. So that's unfortunately as far as you go. Uh, Wiss? I'm thinking about... Uh, what is the attitude of the guards towards us? Uh, currently, the guards are holding on to Atura very firmly, but looking at Captain uh, Zepp in terror, uh, they haven't yet acted, but they, they're looking very panicked. I um, want to use force friendship on one of them. You don't think that's going to work at this particular juncture in time because there is a man holding a thermo... Uh, 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 a detonator with... Uh, Beeping sounds. Um, well, that, that, that may be too. Yeah. So. Hmm. Uh, maybe I will join and scare them. I just take my lightsaber. Yes. Uh, but don't ignite it. Just, okay. just take a stance and yes. show myself. I like it. I like it. Would you give me, please, um, give me an intimidate check, if you please. I don't have any bonuses. Oh, 18. 18. You kind of, you adopt this stance of, I'm not taking any nonsense from anyone. And I don't care that he has a thermo detonator with him. I, um, I just don't care. And you should run. They, they, yes, well, they, they really wish they could run, but at the moment it's Shao's turn. Okay, so the guards, are these, like, private security, or are they the same as the guards for the station? These are not guards from the station. The guards from the station that you encountered were wearing ragtag armor, they were slovenly, they really didn't look very good at all. Uh, these are definitely highly trained military units. Their uniforms are polished. They're, they're looking good. Well, they might look good, but they broke the law. So, um, I want to try to contact some guards. Are there... Well, well, with the guy with the detonator. <laughs> I have, I have... <laughs> when you guys get the signal, put the, put the weapons away. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're hoping happens alright you're trying to push your way through the crowds uh, towards the guards you can see the station guards over there are trying to push their way back Okay. to get to the scene because they're supposed to respond but it's difficult for them so it's easier for you to get to them than it is for them to get to you so you, you follow the stream of people and you find someone who's busy pushing his way forward He's a uh, um, Monkel, so he has the big goggle eyes, and, and he looks at you. What do you say? Please help. There, are, there are some armed men that are trying to kidnap a poor innocent girl. Right now, I have someone on my station who's holding a thermal detonator. I don't care what is happening to your friend at this present moment in time. I will deal with him later. As Wait, he's... it's not real. It's not real. What do you mean it's not real? He stops and looks at you. We're trying to we're trying to save our friend who's being kidnapped by men with very real weapons. And we did we are not armed, so we had to You are responsible for causing everybody on this station to panic and trying to get to their ships? I think you're missing the point here. <laughs> there are actually armed men on the ship right now. <clears throat> The only forces that are allowed to be armed aboard the space station are my own men or those of the empires. Uh, oh. Um, would I know if they are empire? The empire, the Sith Empire, hasn't been seen for a very long time. They were, they were beaten back to a very small part of the galaxy, if that's that empire. There are several other empires that are floating around, but you're not entirely sure who, whom it would be. Well, I'm sure these men are not supposed to be armed, and they're right over here. And I'll start. All right. Them. Well, yeah. 
he starts pushing next to you. You can see he's got a, uh, uh, a baton in his hand, which is obviously some kind of shock baton that he's 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 trying to use as you're you're pushing forward. Um, it now takes us to uh, Itura. What are you doing? Hmm. I'm I'm trying to squirm away from the guards. Uh, at the same time, I'm also going like, "You think I'm deranged? He's my captain." <laughs> <laughs> and I I try to shout at Captain Zepp while pointing with my leg cook to the cantina, uh -huh. like, "She's here! She's here!" <laughs> <laughs> the captain uh, what? like what? voicing with yeah. my mouth beep beep like, beep 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 beep, 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 beep. <laughs> 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 all right that's what you're doing the guards let you go immediately and they they pull out their blasters and point at you captain zeb and they they uh they're not entirely sure what to do but there's a moment and then suddenly both their heads snap around and they look back at that cantina door that you were shouting at and the door opens and that woman is standing there looking exceptionally unhappy with life. She sees you, Captain Zepp. She sees you, Wiss. And her hand drops to her belt and this red lightsaber ignites oh. and as it does you just get this wash of dark side just emanating out from her you don't think as much as you would like to take her on but anyone who is radiating that much cold that much dark side she is significantly more advanced in the dark side than you are in the light side she is about a hundred meters down the the walkway on the other side of the station but we're back at the top of the round captain zepp what are you doing you can see shao seems to be leading some armed men towards you so I am going to shout at the top of my lungs, all right, crew, back to the ship. I'll hold here for a moment. All right. So you're going to take your stance. You're still holding this beeping bomb. Remember, you blast me. I let go. The trigger goes. All of us go. Okay. Noble sentiment. Lexi? Lexi picks herself up off the ground, <laughs> nursing her pronouns. <clears throat> um, looks around. So Atura's free of the guards now. Yes. And the captain said to go back to the ship. Mm. Yeah, so I think she will... How far away from me is Atura? 10 metres, not even. All right, okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think she's just going to rush to Atura's side and then just be like, come on, you hit the captain. Let's, let's get out of here. All right. She looks scary. <clears throat> so you both start running as fast as you possibly can into the crowd. It's not difficult whatsoever. You start flowing towards the docking port that you were you were landed at. Uh, Wiss, uh, I look I look at the lady, then I look at my saber. <laughs> Quickly hide it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, I will grab the bag with the robot and run away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. There is there is something to be said. About. Just, nothing to say here. <laughs> Shao, you finally push your way through the last of the crowd with the Mon Calamari captain behind you. The only one standing in the middle of this very rapidly emptying space station now is Captain Zepp holding the bomb. Two very nervous looking well-dressed guards and then this woman at the far end with this red lightsaber engaged. And the Monkel looks at you, he looks at Zepp, he looks at the guards. I don't see your friend here. All I see is a man with a bomb. 
it's not real, I assure you. Those two men, and the that's their commander in the back there. They're the threat. He looks at them, he looks back at you. They are on legitimate business in this station. B um... <laughs> 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 How? What kind of business? That is not for you to ask. You are an ally with this man with this false bomb. Well, it's you see, <laughs> they had just tried to kidnap somebody. Whatever business they're in, that can't be legal, right? kind of slowly stepping back away. He looks at the two guards who have no one near them. I don't uh, see anything of a kidnapping. Just a man with a bomb and loyal citizens responding. And Yes, you, loyal citizen. I'll point to Zep. As he's, he's holding a, a bomb, shouting, If you <laughs> kill me, we're all dead! <laughs> Captain, we've got we've got reinforcements. I think we can go. Shouts to Zep. You are not going anywhere. Uh, not until this entire disaster is resolved. You do notice his stun baton that he has is engaged, and he's waving it generally in your direction. Gosh, <laughs> are you gonna do anything? Please, you have to believe me. <clears throat> that they were trying to kidnap somebody and we were just doing our best to distract them without using real weapons. His eyes couldn't get bigger if he tried as he looks from you back to Captain Zepp holding the beeping bomb. Have you ingested anything on this station? <laughs> <laughs> but before you answer, he turns and he looks at you, Captain Zip. Is that a real explosive device? Oh, this? Yes. Why? You can come test it out. <laughs> I want you to tell me the intent of that statement. Is it to make him think that there is a chance it might be real? Or is it genuine he should come and check it for himself? The closer he can get to us, the better off we are. So, yes, I would like him to check it. Okay. He looks at you, Shao. Don't move. And then he starts walking over to the captain. The two... Uh, Itura, you're busy running with Lexi. You not, are you just running with her? You're not going to do anything strange? I would have been running towards the captain. Lexi was dragging you away from the captain. Yes. So you're going to break away from Lexi now and run back towards the captain. How close are we to the ship? Uh, about 25 meters. And the captain's 50 meters behind you. I'll go rev up the engines. All right. That's what you do. You guys continue running towards the ship. The two guards were standing there, watched as everyone, this chaos happened. Their hands are on their blasters. They, they both look at you, Captain. That thing isn't real. Well, funny that. It's all based on perspective, really. I mean, it is real. It's in my hand. The Mon Calamari officer is approaching you. The two guards start approaching you. The woman with the ignited red lightsaber, which is no longer lit, it is retracted. She starts stalking forward as well. The Monkel arrives. Would you give me the device? Yeah. And he will, Zep will carefully hand it over. No sudden movements. 
The Mon Kel takes it, looks at it. Yeah. It's nothing but a power pack and a beeper. He looks from Shao to you and then to the guards. Why would you do something like this? You realize it is an offense to even threaten the station. Well, they were threatening my crew. And I couldn't stand by and let them abduct my crew without a fight. I'm not much of a fighter myself, so all I got is my charming good looks and my quick wit. He turns to the two guards. You were threatening a member of his crew? The guards don't say anything. They suddenly stand to attention as the commander, this woman that you've seen before on the little hologram, she steps forward and uh, she looks at him and she says, Captain Yaki, I am most disappointed at this very poor response on your behalf to an obvious test of your systems. We hired the captain here to test whether or not your men could respond to a situation of this kind. You clearly have failed. Uh, captain, I thank you for your services. You and your crew may go. You're no longer required. Now, Captain Yaki, if you will come with me to the cantina, we will go over your plans for the station's security one more time. It is clearly lacking. Zep is going to hold a finger, round it up. All right, everybody. Back to the ship. Test over. Zip. You all, uh, you did great. You and Shao standing there. Uh, Calamari looks at you, Shao. You could have said something. And then he continues with the commander towards the cantina again, leaving the two of you to make your way towards the station. Uh, towards the uh, ship. Uh, Shao? Zep? Um, <clears throat> well, we should, we should buy the rest of the robot. Yeah, if we're out of immediate danger. <laughs> oh no, the station, most people have evacuated. You know that it will take a good hour and a half for the station to issue. No, it's okay. You can come back. It's fine. It was a drill. So, so, apparently. so we don't take. So we don't take. Uh, we don't buy it. We we will take it. <laughs> yeah. You you're going to steal the droid parts on your way out. Well, it's like we're done here. And well, we're taking we, this. We're... And we're taking that. And we're still done. <laughs> and we're taking that. And well, we're out. Well, I'm good enough. I will take the parts and leave the cash <laughs> and go. Uh, what cash would that be? You, uh, you, you well, I, I need to ask someone to. to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Xiao is the only one who has any money left. I have a thousand and twenty five credits. Well, that's that's enough. We need uh, hundred and fifty. Oh, OK. No, a hundred. Sure. Well, I think it was two fifty. No, no, it was two hundred. Half of it. Just was... two. Oh, yeah. so 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 it's one hundred. So one hundred. Yeah. Okay. You leave a hundred credits and take the rest On of the, the parts. <laughs> you get onto your ship, and uh, everyone else is there. She's primed and ready. Uh, Itura, you are in the um, cockpit because you were priming the, the vessel. There is a communications uh, light flashing. There's an incoming communication from the station. You are cleared for departure. I will prep her to go and back out of there. and But as, at the same time, I'll be to the captain like... Captain, I might have royally dumbed this out. 
I might have done something very stupid. She now knows who we are. If she didn't already, I. She was in our systems. Well, well she is a, a thief. So, uh. what did she want? She was going to interrogate me or something, or gut me. I don't know. Zep is going to lean against the wall. Well, of course they know me. I'm famous, you know. I don't know why, but I probably am. <laughs> but either way, we need to get this droid built, get out of here, and figure out what our next move is. Yes. Take us anywhere. And quick. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want? Is to... there any way, as we find, is there any way to like? Have we got? I'm not too sure what we've got on the ship in mm. terms of like sensors and things. Yeah. I want to just see if anybody leaves the station after us. All right. That makes sense. Are if you... there's a way to do that, oh, do I just look out the back window or? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> anyway, so my question to you is: is when the captain says just take us away, do you actually make a hyperspace jump to the next system? Do you simply engage the sublight and go to a distant moon in this in this system? Do you jump to another system? That's the question I have to ask you. Ijira would probably be panicking and just go straight into hyper. All right, so you're just going to jump the system next door. Uh, that's the yep. easiest kind of way. In which case, Lexi, you can give me a... Um, uh, you know what? Give me a sense motive check as you were watching the senses. Ooh. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> 17. That strange arrow-shaped frigate, as you feel the tug of uh, hyperdrive kicking in, she was on the far side of the station, but she had disengaged. And as the hyperdrive kicks in, she seems to be angling in a very suggestive manner that she's going to exit on exactly the same trajectory that you're exiting on. It doesn't mean anything. Where you're going, you would probably take that as an exit... On a thousand hmm. different journeys. You could also choose any other number of vectors to leave the system in. It's just a bit odd that they chose the exact same one that you happen to be on. <clears throat> I, we may have picked up a wee tail. Uh, do you remember that the weird ship I told you about? Did I tell you about the weird ship? Anyway, there was a weird ship and it may be following us. She is persistent. It may not be her. I mean, well. She's a seed. Mm. I thought they were all dead. Yeah. Oh. No, my master said that they won't be dead that week. Well, that's a competent thought. Now oh, we've got to <laughs> sit after us. We only wanted to make some money. Mm. Uh, is there some way we can throw her off our trail or? I think Itura is indicating that multiple hops in different directions will do the trick. Is that yeah. what you engage in doing? Yes, and trying to, I don't know. They they have such an advanced ship that probably they can track every single little remnant of our of our hyperdrive. But I. We'll try to aim for like energy disturbances or asteroid fields, something to like get her off our trail. All right, give me an astrogate check, if you please. 
Oh, that's the thing. I don't have proficiency, but that's a natural 20. Uh -huh. <laughs> a natural 20. Okay. Well, on your natural 20, you start to plot several courses. You have a few choices available to you. There is a binary star system nearby. It creates all kinds of distortions and things, and you reckon that if you were to jump in there, if you jumped out of there, you would mask your trail. There is a slight problem, however. Binary stars generally are ripping each other apart, and so there are occasional flare-ups of energy. There is a small chance, it is unfortunately 20%, that if you jumped into the system, you might get hit by a flare, and that will simply render your ship completely and utterly inoperable for a good few days whilst you reboot the entire system. The alternative is there is an asteroid field that you could jump into. The probability of successfully navigating an asteroid field, however, is approximately 3,970 to 1. But if you were to get inside the asteroid field, you certainly would be obscured from any pursuing ships whatsoever. The third option is a nebula designated unstable. It contains a vast amount of gases which are fairly flammable and should any disruptor fire or any kind of um, attack happen from turbo lasers or anything along those lines there are pockets of the gas which will most likely ignite and vaporize everything in that space the alternative is giant open tracts of space where there is a very small chance that they could detect your exit uh, vector. I thought I like big boobs. So you're going to the nebula? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ouch. Captain? Um, I want to suggest something first. Mm -hmm. What if we vent some of our engine gases heading towards the asteroid field and then hit the nebula? Ooh. Should we have? Would we have to navigate some of the asteroid this field, direction. or no? Just no. in that direction. Okay. Yes. You certainly could do that. Uh, it will take a little bit of time to set that up, and you've got to do the astrogation calculations anyway. So the two of you are busy working on that. Uh, what is Shao doing? Um. Well, hmm, Shao's a little winding down still from all the excitement. <clears throat> He's probably just going to um, get out of the cockpit where they're planning these really dangerous maneuvers. Oh my gosh. Uh, go sit down somewhere and do some sketching on the data pad. Okay, that is what Shao is doing. Yeah, he needs a little stress reliever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will start to unpack the droid from the bag uh -huh. and try to check if there is something missing. Absolutely. Give me a repair check, if you please. Uh, nine. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but you think you've got two left arms. <laughs> But, oh well that that won't work or well, maybe it will work you've got two left you've got two legs which seem left and right you've got the torso there's the head so you think you've got it all it's just yes when you hold the thumbs up they're both in the same direction it's like well hang on a moment how does that how does that work you know um, oh no but, uh, i took the wrong part it's it's an easy mistake to make one arm's green the other one's red um but yes. also i i don't really mean to be that person but in like this system you need to remember that some skills can't be used untrained yes. as well like if you've got no ranks in them and you i don't have that them. little repair, squiggle you just right. can't use it so, yes yeah. you are quite right you are quite right but yes that's sadly where you find yourself with a droid with too many arms and and uh uh, yeah, you wouldn't even know where to start in terms of plugging this this whole thing in. Lexi, what are you doing? Um. Hmm. You are here.
hearing the uh, unmistakable sound of droid parts being dropped on the floor. <laughs> There's the mutterings of Itura as she's uh, trying to do hyperspace uh, calculations. Yeah, There's... that's way over. What's going on in there? Like the piloting things she can do, but the rest of it, you know, just give her something to fly and that's fine. But that, the rest of that's just way over her head. Yes. So she'll probably wander off to see what all the clanking noises uh, going on. Especially if he's, I don't know where Wiss is doing it at. Yeah, if we go to the map of the ship, I would imagine. Um, where would you be fixing the droid? Uh, well, pro probably the the, the, the hangar. Main. Oh, in the, the the cargo bay down below. In the uh, in the hangar, or right or left? Yes, the right. It's on the right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Left, right, this one. No hangar. Sorry, sorry. That's this one here. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, Dex, and that is also where Lexi's gone. Where the hell's Lexi gone? There's Lexi. Okay, so Lexi, you find him in the uh, hangar bay. Uh, Captain Zep is actually on the bridge, and Shao is no longer in the bridge. Shao is. Are you quarters on the left or the right? Left. Left. Okay, I I think that's left. It's that one now. <laughs> yeah, and and we would be on the other side. Yep. Because that's the hangar, or the the workshop area. Oh, I see. I, I even see the benches yeah. there now. So. Yeah. Well, it's. I think it's mirrored. That could way. could very well be the case. There we go. Oh, all right. Okay. Perhaps, there yeah. you go. Now you're all on the right right side, <clears throat> doing your thing whilst the captain and uh, Ituro are doing, doing their thing. What are you doing? Uh, I'm figuring out if I have all the parts, but I think I grabbed the wrong hand. It's two left, and I, I needed the one right at the least. Give me a repair check if you can, <laughs> see. Repair <laughs> is... <sighs> That's 25. Ah, it is a rookie mistake. He has a left hand and a right hand. The right hand, however, has been screwed on backwards. And that causes it to look ah. like a left hand. And no, no, <laughs> So all the parts are indeed there. The droid is very old. So you doubt that it's the latest protocol droid. Uh, this particular model could only speak about a million languages. Uh, that's why it was made redundant and eventually phased out of service. The oh, power man. core needs to be completely recharged, but you're fairly certain if you took a couple hours, you could fix it. I mean, I could put the body and that back together, the computery bits inside. Um, I know that up to scratch with droids, but I could definitely put the, the mechanical bits together. Take a couple of hours. That, that that will be good. He can help with the decoding. Right, excellent. <clears throat> I'll pass that number four spanner. I, I looked at the tools <laughs> and <laughs> scratched my head. <laughs> and uh, so the two of you get involved. Shao is this <laughs> center of calm as the two teams are frantically doing their various bits and bobs so combined from the front of the ship from the cockpit as the captain and Etura are attempting to cause this deception to occur i will need the two of you to please give me a combined bluff check and the bluff check needs to be higher than 20. fail me now the force mm -hmm. the force <laughs> Wait, what does that use? Uh, bluff uses intelligence. No, charisma, 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 sorry. Cool. Oh, no, it's a plus zero. How much did we need? What did you get, Captain? I got 25. Okay, <sighs> you don't need to get very much, Tura. Just don't roll a one. Well, that's a 16. 
they, the two of you are dab hands at creating smoke screens and false trails. You zip out of the system, having vented just enough gas to make it look like your engine is slightly imbalanced, but not completely imbalanced, so that it doesn't look like you purposefully left the gas there, but that it was just by accident that you left the gas there. You jump into hyperspace, and moments later you emerge in this brilliant pink environment. And immediately your your the the screens on the front of your ship get soaked in this sort of goo from the actual nebula itself. It has vast pockets of actual liquid gas which splash up against the screen. And you notice as they hit the glass there's little pockets of flame that briefly flare up in these orange bubbles and then disappear as it interacts with the remaining particles of dust on the, the shields of the, the screen itself. The sensors immediately go... <laughs> you can see nothing at all because you've literally plunged your starship into a semi-liquid, semi-solid, semi-gaseous state uh, all around it. You are fairly certain that no one will be able to find you in here because you yourselves have no idea where you are. But that is the success that happens in the cockpit. And this takes several hours, by the way, in order for you to have made it successfully and, and to have snuck, slunk away. Meanwhile, back in the tool shed, down in the uh, cargo bay, Lexi, with her beautiful assistant... Uh, will now saw in half the man, or in this case, actually <laughs> bolt him back together again. Um, Mr. Frankenstein. Exactly, exactly, exactly right. So what I would like here is how do you think uh, uh, Wiss is going to be helping Lexi? Is it literally just going to be handing over spare parts? Well, he he has uh, proficiency in medical things, so maybe he has some idea how to do delicate things, and he can use uh, force ah. uh, okay. to, to move things. I like that. I like that. Hmm. In which case, your medicine combined check with Lexi, and Lexi, it's a repair check, I'm afraid. Can't make it more exciting than that. Okay. Oh, that's your little cup. I'll be 26. From 26. Me. And I have 18. 26 and 18. That's fantastic. That's, yeah, that's, that's a ridiculously high number the two of you combined together. You get the droid into one piece, you flick the power switch, he's running by cable into the ship because his battery pack, is, his own internal pack is not yet capable of holding a charge that's just too old. So he is connected by a cable to the ship. And one eye comes alight, then the other one comes alight for a moment, and then it gets very, 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 very bright, and then goes dark. Lexi, you realize, tap, 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 tap. <laughs> and then it comes back on again after you've tapped it a few times. <laughs> the droid sits up. Oh, my. You are not my designated master. Well, I, we put you back together, so I think you should be grateful. I was not consulted on the process. I feel gratitude is unwarranted. I mean, I could take you back apart again if you want. If you feel you are competent. Oh, I'm competent. Do you want to be in pieces or not in pieces? That depends. On what? Why did you put me back together again? We need your help. In that case, then, I shall offer my help in exchange for my freedom. Oh, that's. I think it's a uh, good deal. Trouble. Yeah, I mean. Hmm. Well, 
he's on our ship and uh, if yeah. uh, if he wants to be free after helping the the airlock is down there are you sure you're a jedi <laughs> my designation is a b3 well, I that's... notice your attempt at humor. It would work on several planets. Unfortunately, not this one. Well, we, we are technically not on a planet. You said you required my assistance. What yes, can I assist we... you with? Uh, we need to uh, decrypt some crystals we got and uh, our uh, computer doesn't do this uh, like we want to do. He looks around the cargo hold. I do not find that surprising. Well, well, it, yeah, you, you said it. Supply me with the data crystals you wish me to interpret. If I can, I shall do so. Uh, right, well, you just stay there, then Abe. I'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> well, you know, you don't let him do anything. Well, we we should see how the how much uh, the, our computer did the code before we we or or we should connect the robot the the, the, the computer. Or maybe that will speed the the process. Because I don't I don't think if we take the crystals, then the the progress will be lost. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, you could potentially help the droid in terms of his translation processes. However, he is not a decryption droid. He is a protocol droid. So he will either understand the language or he won't. He may have software installed that will allow him to attempt to interpret language based on the various things. But again, if it's a code, he is unlikely to be able to read it because code is not language. Code is designed to be deceptive. We, we may try. Maybe maybe it will happen. Before I turn to Rust, might I suggest that I simply take the data crystals and attempt to analyze what they contain? Well, let's do that. You bring him the data crystals because he can't. You don't have to bring them. You don't have to take the one the computer is working on. You can bring him. Yeah, one just one. bring one of the other ones. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> He takes the data crystal, he holds it in his hand, and then his finger unscrews, and you see this very small access port, and he plugs it into the base of the crystal. I am attempting to interface with the crystal. His eyes shut down. They sort of dim, and the whole ship starts to dim. Little oh, warning lights start popping up, Captain. See if I can pull and the crystal. <laughs> Tura all over the ship's dashboards. Power is being drained from a whole bunch of different systems. What um, a piece of junk! <laughs> you try and grab the crystal. You need to give me a strength check, please. Just a straight up strength check. How grave is the energy loss? Um. It was unexpected on the ship's system, and so you've had a drop of about 60% power. Do you I have got a, a I got backup a three. power or something? <laughs> uh, the ship uh, doesn't have backup power, sadly. This is not that universe uh, where they have backup and auxiliary power. Um there is <laughs> junk. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. the lights have dimmed. Yes, I got three. <laughs> yeah, it's. I I want feel an animal chop its hand off. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to go on the intercom. Well, well, we put it back together, and now you want to chop in his hand. No. Um, it's draining um, the power in the ship. Bridge to Lexi. Bridge to Lexi. 
Pull the power cord. What? Right, Ever? we're dealing with it. Just well, keep read out the power on. to the droid. Lexi. Right, just unplug Lexi. it. Lexi. What? <laughs> we're having a bit of an issue down here, in case you couldn't tell. Yes. Whatever the, it is, the, the, the it better be the good, because we're down to 40 or 60. 40. We're down to 40, but okay. Well, I then it's not go good, way. is it? That's well, I can keep you that way. Good. Have you pulled the plug out yet? <laughs> Are we getting somewhere? Well, when <laughs> there is shouting and chaos going on, Captain Zep, what are you doing whilst Itura is? She is trying to shout to over leave. over two people shouting on top of 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 that. So, what are you trying to do? Well, uh, now it's my problem. I'm going to head down to the hold with them. <laughs> All right, you start making your way down to the hold. Shao, you're just hearing over the comms on the ship this battle of wills going on. Are you doing anything apart from sketching really hard, maybe? <laughs> yeah, trying and then, and then, oh, darn it. Uh, throw that on the data pad and, oh, I better see what's going on and go out of the uh, quarters. Um, I guess... I'm right next to them in the yeah. Uh, what is it? The garage. That's right. The, the, yeah, the hangar. Yeah, the hangar. Okay, so I'll stop in. Uh, All right. Is everything okay? As they come into this. The, the the droid took too much power, but let him do this. We have time. We are gliding through space slime, essentially. So we don't need that much power. Let the droid finish the, the thing. Lexi, are you happy with that? You muted? Like, how fast is the power training? Because it went from full to, what, 60 in seconds? It, 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 well, what you realize is that it wasn't a drain. It's just consumption of power. So it's literally sucking it. It's not using the power. It's it, 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 You basically plugged a gigantic device into your power core and it's just said right i need 60 percent boom so it's pulled a huge amount of power off once you unplug it the power will be restored but at the moment the ship is at 40 percent power which means no weapons no shields no hyperdrive uh, but everything else is fine life support okay. sensors that sort of thing hmm. <clears throat> right fine captain you arrive there's three people standing watching this very dull droid. <laughs> All right, what are we get? Oh, wait, Yellen's done. Okay, well, I'm good at this. Uh. <laughs> so, power's good, droid's good. Let's just give it time. That's that's all we need to do. Just give it time. I'm really waiting for something to prove me wrong at this point. <laughs> Tura, please give me please give me a spot check. Spot. Hmm? I have sharp eyed. Does that help? Yes. Good. Ooh, fourteen plus two. That is a sixteen, I think. What does it use? Spot. Intelli yeah. Uh, it uses wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, then that is a 15. 15. All right. So you hear the hubbub dying down and you kind of settle back in your chair, just monitoring everything. When you think the light is this soft pink and it dips dark for a while and then it comes back up again as if something moved over the top of the ship or blocked the light in some way. You have no idea whether it was an asteroid, a random effect of the nebula itself. You could try to filter out the interference on the sensors if you really wanted to. It's a finickety job, but that might yes, allow you to I see I will try us. that. Okay, it's a computer use check. Good, I have uh, I have that, and it's a plus five. Nice. Please be good. Be good. What is? It? Uh, 
lucky 13 um oh, that's an 18 mm. yeah. all right you start to 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 filter out frequencies and things which you think are interfering back in the cargo hold the four of you are standing there watching the droid and his eyes start to light up again and the ship's lights dim even further down uh, as he's drawing more power and he turns and looks at you and he starts to spew out a series of coordinates i have the recording stick <laughs> <laughs> all right well he spews out coordinates that after a moment you realize that they must be galactic coordinates they could lead they definitely identify a very specific location um that's the first thing that he he starts to spew out then he says i have accessed the data crystal i will oh. begin transmitting the data to the ship's engine uh, to the ship's computer there is significant amount of data what data do you want to transfer what kind of data there is can you just categorize it data supplied is geographic and geological surveys and stress production tests production design of structures transportation requirements uh, scheduling timetables there is data on design of multiple structures personnel required there is significant amount of schematics as well which are unable to be classified at this moment in time i will require more time and data is fragmented uh, only one sixth present uh, which which one will we need i ask the crew uh, what what may we transfer that's more important should we wait because that that woman uh was able to take all of the information out of our ship and if we if we just give her all of this I die. the bug thing yeah okay, we, we should deal with that first right probably also does anyone know what those coordinates are if you send them to itura she can check out on the astrogation um computer well we should we should do that definitely huh. itura Yes. Are you, are you busy? Well... Just calibrating the last of the sensors. We either have space octopi or someone's here with us. Oh, what no, you got? That's not the same. I just want a, a quick check on some coordinates. It's not important. Give me a moment. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> I rattle them off. You punch them into the astrogation computer, Itura? Well, if I can do that. Yeah, you can. Uh, you, you, you sort of leave the, 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 the sensors. You're, you're starting to get... You've got about a meter radius around the ship now, which you think is fairly accurate. You punch in the coordinates on the astrogation computer, and once again your screen goes red, and it says access to this information restricted. It's in exactly the same location that Farith Prime was in. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> we already had that. <laughs> nope. So it's useless then. Oh, it's not useless. I mean, we still need to know what they're doing there. Uh, Some of this might be handy, but I don't Should think I need begin it all transferring right now. data from Crystal or should I disengage? Well, do you have and is there any data about technological stuff? 
There I, are weapons or something. approximately 8,500 files pertaining to technological design. And the, and the crystals aren't going anywhere. Like, it's no way if we unplug them, we'll not get it back well, later. Well, maybe we could find something, some blueprints that we can use right now or build something from them that will help us later on. Maybe we should transfer that. But Maybe we, still need to, we still need to I... work the bug out first before we put more information into the system. I suggest we get rid of that virus. Well, that that's, that's logical. <clears throat> I shall disengage. Yes, Hi. that's okay. He disengages and immediately the lights all shoot back up again as power is available your senses ping out to now at least 50 meters in all directions and i want you to to roll me a 1d20 atura and just tell me the number straight up what the number is one nine nineteen. Nineteen, not my twelve. So you were lucky. You you catch at the very edge of the senses, and you wouldn't have caught it if you hadn't been refining them. But at the very edge of the senses, you catch the tail end of what is an unmistakable probe droid of some kind that seems to be circling in the nebula, doing a very large spiral search pattern, which makes sense. It covers the most ground. It's obviously looking can it, at can the moment. It see us? You don't think so, because your ship's much more powerful than it is, so your sensors have better range, and this is at the furthest edge of your sensors. So uh, it will, however, in its next loop, come within five meters of your hull if you don't move. How would I navigate? How would I propel myself in this nebula? <laughs> Well, that's where it gets a little tricky. You can do piloting checks using the thrusters on your ship only. So you're not going very fast, but you are effectively using pressure rather than anything else to maneuver your ship. It's mm -hmm. delicate work, however. Thrusters are not... Uh, well, they are designed for delicate maneuvering, but not for quick maneuvering. You will have to anticipate the droid's pattern successfully in order to avoid being detected by it. Okay. I have piloting and I have starship operations, yes. space transport. Which is fantastic. So I'm going to come back to you on that one. The four of you down in the cargo hold, the droid looks back at you. I was not prepared for that information. You did not tell me. It was so fast. I didn't know really to be. Well, we well, kind of half did, but yeah. It will take me several hours to translate <clears throat> and transfer all of that data to your ship's uh, computer. Uh, uh, and it's only uh, one crystal, and we have five of them? Plus six. 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 That is a significant amount of information. It will take I... me some time to process that. I will also require a fairly large amount of storage aboard your ship's computer, which I might add is sorely lacking wait I, 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 I look... salt my ship yes he's very sassy <clears throat> to be perfectly correct I, captain i quite like him to be fair and well we all knew that the ship is junk anyway just yeah but it's my junk, junk. just just well it's yeah well used it's just Lexi like strokes the hull of the ship don't listen to him that's not what he's talking about well uh, I do much more like flying old ships than brand new it's a different feeling that character yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do about this computer core um, let me see if I can clear up some space and I'll go to a computer and try to, um, I don't know how this works exactly, but try to locate the, the bug, okay. the spike. Computer use check, if you please. Uh, 16. Yes. Well, 
You certainly uh, find the file. I believe Lexi was the last one who was tampering with it. You were trying to reverse it or something, weren't you? Yeah, I said I was just going to, just whenever we had a chance. Because I think you said it was a kind of only threatening if they happened to be logged into it at the same time. Yes. Like, it's not on all the time Correct. kind of thing. Correct. But, yeah, and I just said that I would just take time to work on reversing it. Yeah, right. whenever we had time. So, <clears throat> shall you find Lexi's working files, and uh, you reckon that if you spent maybe four hours, you could probably purge the entire system of it. There is a small mm -hmm. downside, however that whilst you are purging the computer core, your ship will not be able to make any form of astrogation jump whatsoever. It will be entirely up to the captain or the pilot to make a manual calculation, which is possible, just exceptionally difficult. You also won't have any targeting computers or any system, basically, that requires heavy calculation, as the core will literally be in a process of destroying rewriting rerouting itself as it uh, gets rid of this uh, spike <clears throat> so i'll turn to lexi we could just remove it but we would need to be sure the ship is in a safe place because hmm. this is going to be it's going to disable most of our systems but um but i do like your idea of, of using it against whoever Put it on us. Do you know? How... I think we know who it is now. Right. Um, that will take double the amount of time. And, but uh, it would then allow you effectively to send whatever data you wanted to them rather than them just pulling data from your core. Is it possible to determine how much space we need and how much space it would actually, we would be able to clear out oh sure uh, the, the 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 information that the droid sent to the computer itself your systems were able to take all of the data crystals without a problem the biggest oh. the biggest issue was more a case of once it's on your computer system then if whoever controls the spike hack uh, logged in they would be able mm. to pull that data down hmm. so maybe being able to sense them specific information would be pretty useful yeah. If we were to reverse the spike, then, like you had said, Lexi. Perhaps. Although, if we just send it to them, would it not be a bit suspicious? Well, we can send yeah. them something else, like, I don't know, fake data. Or. Hmm. It is entirely possible to create, <clears throat> instead of your actual flight plan, you create a flight path that you make it look as if it was your actual flight plan. Mm. You could send it, you could simply find a connection to the holonet, download the complete works of Chuck Ao, the great philosopher, and send that as part of, that's what's on our computer core, because from what you can tell, the spike <laughs> will just pull everything that's on your, your core off and transmit it so you you can hide away pockets that the spike wouldn't be able to access with this if you got to the point where you would then control it so we could essentially make like a fake social media account for our ship yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> you want to go that route. Uh, lexi, will be... <laughs> lexi will contact uh, itura itura mm-hmm are, are we safe at the moment? We've got to probe on our tail. Ah, just, well, so I guess you wouldn't recommend shutting down the computer systems right about now, then. It'd probably be a bad idea. Oh, wait, um, I think that's a no. <laughs> I need some new eardrums now. Oh. <clears throat> I don't think she's very happy about the whole shutting down the computer system thing, shall Right. Maybe uh, she I heard something about 
slime in space, and that worries me. There's a lot that's worrying me right now. I, yeah. Captain, what are you doing whilst the two computer <laughs> users are planning and plotting? I think Captain's going to head back to the uh, uh, to the uh, cockpit. Right. Beautiful pink light streaming in from outside. And then he's going to look to Tora and go, all right. So, problem. How do we take care of problem? Very, very gently. Like a crawling baby hut through the slime. Oh, not me then, because I'm more like the flailing bantha monster type. Hmm. We, we, we're going to have to use only the thrusters. What? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only the thrusters. And I do need someone to map out for me because I'm going full manual on this. That I might be able to help you with. Good. All right. So that's what the two of you are going to be doing. Wiss, have you stuck around for the uh, computer discussion? or I, I I was there, but I didn't pay much attention because it's not my uh, thing to do, to do. I just look at the droid. Uh, how, how do it look uh, visually? The droid itself? It, 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 well, the green arm and the red arm make it look quite festive, but his chassis is vaguely humanoid. Uh, it doesn't have any exposed cabling, but it's very thin legs with those pistons on either side uh, of the joints and things. The head itself, it has two eyes, obviously. It has the semblance of a fake nose and then the vocoder, which is where the mouth is the actual shape of the head it's got quite a, a far sweeping back um, section to its skull making it look fairly alien but that's just the design of the, the species that built it I will go look for some paint <laughs> on the ship in a crate somewhere there's an old tin of paint yep for repairing the hull and that sort of thing I, I go to the droid and start painting it. <laughs> the droid looks at you. I feel that this is a violation of my rights. Well, uh, that two uh, different colored uh, limbs are really obnoxious. I, I'm trying to cover that. <laughs> I appreciate your efforts. Harmony is far preferred to the disorganized state. Perhaps once you are finished, you will paint the entire ship. Uh, well, if... <laughs> if Captain's good with that, maybe. Uh, if I have a free time. <laughs> All right, you are painting uh, sarcasm. Uh, so, the two computer users, are you not going to try and remove the spike? Or convert it? What, are you, what, are you, what have you decided upon? Probably wait and do the safer, the longer option of, of uh, converting it, I think. What do you think, Lexi? Yeah, I think we should let Etora do her um, getting us out of here thing before we right, cripple, we what, cripple her, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. Etora, you are going to be making a, uh, your, um, transport check for me please your starship operations uh, transports but before you do that captain you are going to make for me if you please a piloting or computer use check Ooh. as you attempt to plot a course for utura to follow i will go with piloting all right 10 Itura, the captain is going come about to three one five mark five no mark four no wait 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 three two one sorry uh mark five five ish 
so there is there's not a lot of sureness coming through there but give me your starship operation <laughs> is that a okay. seven or a nine <laughs> <laughs> i can only sod this up with a very low throw that's a 19 Lovely. and that plus eight would be 27 Excellent. 27. The captain's giving you the coordinates. You're starting to realize... Not, I even changed the die. Oh, lovely. You're trying to compensate for the captain's vagaries. You, and you, you, you seem to do so. So you got a grand total of 27, you say? Yes. Plus the captain's 10, so that puts you on 37. The uh, chances that the droid sees you are minimal, unless I roll a natural 20. I got a 10, not a 20. As you drift, the jets firing. As you're slowly rotating your nose away from the droid, drifting out, drifting out. Eventually, the droid disappears from your senses and you are relieved, perhaps, as the pink slime is slowly dribbling and pooling around the edges of the cockpit glass to see stars just on the edge of the nebula. You could at this point now make a hyperspace jump somewhere else, but you are absolutely confident that the droid has been, it did not detect you and it has not detected you. And from this distance, it would detect your hyperdrive jump as a flare up within the nebula, which would not be uncharacteristic for this particular type of nebula. What you say, Captain? Do we make a run for it? Uh, I'm tempted to do something stupid, but uh, let's what? be smart. <gasps> Ooh, I, think I, know I see you like the stupid thinking. idea. Yes, tell me more. What if do we want to see more colors? Load. <laughs> A spark in the probe droid. Unfortunate, but it happens. Well, let's do this. A simple turbo blaster shot from your ship would ignite a fairly large pool of uh, nearby liquid, which would vaporize quite a large area of this nebula. Let's make sure Ooh, we're far enough away first, but... But, but, wouldn't that be too obvious? Uh, gotta come in with a smartness again. <laughs> no, I definitely press the button. <laughs> <laughs> so you're charging up the forward guns? Yep, I have demolitions as a proficiency. Sure, make a demolition <laughs> roll. Don't fail me now, because otherwise you hit a pocket of gas right next to the ship. 21! Oh, that's fine. The, uh, <laughs> there's this as two blasters fire forward. What color are your, your turbo laser cannons? Well, they're not turbo lasers, they're just laser cannons. What Catch color it. are they? Green, blue, yellow, white? Let's go a nice blue. A uh, nice blue. These two blue bolts sail towards the pink of the nebula, and there is a brilliant flash of white. Everybody on the ship, you feel the ship rock gently oh, as no. these explosions ripple out. Get and us out of here. This green flame envelops the nebula as you jump into hyperspace. Are you doing a long jump or are you just jumping to a nearby system? And by long well, jump, I mean, if you spend three hours, you could be half a sector away. Uh, is there somewhere Jedi presence? In the outer rims? Not that you're aware of. Maybe uh, Wiss might know. I will page him. <laughs> Calling Wiz, calling Wiz. Front desk to Captain Wiz. <laughs> yes. We are now free to 
jump wherever, where do you think it would be the safest? Mm. I don't know where we are on, on the... Uh... It's easy enough to bring up a star chart from the ship's uh, systems. You have an ally, Wiss. Um, Aelmar Valona, if you recall. Yep. And Aelmar Valona is... Do you want them to be a Jedi or not? Well, he... he... Well, he can be a Jedi, yes, of course. Okay. And... He's, he's... Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's an uh, older... Uh, um... How, how how should I say it? He's already a Jedi, but we were training together on Titan. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. So, yes, he is, uh, if you're reading the star charts correctly, he is four systems away on a very small planet. You're not sure what he's doing there, but he is definitely, definitely there. The last communication that you had with him uh, on the Holonet was... A selfie with him and a mountain in the background. <laughs> so, uh, so I think we are near where my friend may be. It's four systems away from here. We may go there. Maybe if he will help us. Is that a long jump? Uh, it's a moderate jump. Uh, the planet that Wiss is indicating is called Kedah. Um. It looks like it's one of these backwater junkyard repair shipyard things. Um, most likely ships are taken there to be torn into scrap and then melted down into base metals, which are then shipped off planet. Well, we may find something useful there for our yeah. ship. Indeed. I will plot a course. All right, you plot a course for Kedah. The, it's not, you don't have to make an estrogation roll. The ship can help you on that because the computer core is not being used at the moment. And you make the jump. Our friend will help us for sure. Our little friend, little droid friend. <laughs> well, he's now quite, uh, <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Um, L7P5 will most certainly Lepi. help you. <laughs> So, yes, the jump is three hours, uh, so you all recover vitality if you had lost any in the uh, engagements. And a moment, it seems like a moment later, you drop out at the edge of the Kedah system. There is no communications whatsoever from the system itself. They, You need to get to the actual planet before they'll start talking to you. Uh, you could go under normal impulse speeds, satellite speeds, as they call it, uh, and you would arrive there in about nine hours, or you could do a small jump and arrive directly in front of the planet. Which one would be more customary? Either. Um, some ships, they jump in at the very edge of the system and they use the journey to purge the engines, dump waste out here at the edge of the star system. Um, or boot the core. Well, they, but most of you don't know what other ships are doing, but yes, you could certainly do that. Um, you're not picking up any ships approaching you, so there, there, it well, might no. be an opportunity, but I you could also just jump straight in. Well, we should use that uh, I would time. communicate, like, yeah, yeah, how much time do we need? Guys, how much time is for the bug thing to, to, to be removed. You estimate eight hours if you get it right. Longer if you get it wrong. Well, it's enough time before we get to the planet anyway. So yes. if, you, if you two want to get on it, then mm. that could be nice. Can we still navigate though? If we take the, because obviously the, the doing this is going to take our computer down, really, isn't it? So it's whether we want the computer like completely disabled on the journey, or you want to wait till we get there. You and then won't be able to make astrogation jumps, so you wouldn't be able to engage hyperspace again. Uh, but certainly in terms of flying towards the planet at the moment, you've calculated your vector to get to the planet. It's already locked into the system. Uh, you're on autopilot, really. 
And if you okay. need to go manual, you're not likely to hit anything by just looking out the window. Right, so we are good. Right, so shall we get cracking with this, then, shall we? <clears throat> All okay. right. The two of you are going to start this spiking the spike. Uh, what I just want to quickly go through. Captain, what are you doing whilst the, the computer is down? Well, I'm going to be doing maintenance on my arm. Maintenance on your arm. That's right. Okay. That's what you're doing, Itura. <laughs> Oiling my leg brace. <laughs> handing, <laughs> handing oil to the captain. and like, uh. <laughs> There is a rather... <laughs> A rather delicate, perhaps almost intimate bonding happening on the cockpit as there is oiling and greasing going on between the two of you. <laughs> Wisp, what are you doing? Uh, I'm done with the painting, so, so uh, I think I'm going to the comms room and uh, okay. write something down that already happened i will keep uh, some kind of di diary that i will use okay lovely that's what you're doing okay so the to the two computer techs this is going to be a very difficult challenge for the two of you but i'm confident that you can succeed it is a micro skill challenge, which means it's only the two of you that get to roll. Everybody else is busy doing things behind closed doors, hopefully. So it means one of you can participate. The other one cannot for a particular skill. And then you basically ping pong between each other. So for the first skill, I need someone to make a computer use check. Either one of you can do it. Every time you succeed, you cut an hour off of your clock. Every time you fail, you add an hour to your clock. Okay. Uh, I have a plus six on that one. So, or go you, ahead, then. You're rolling oh, already. I've got a plus three, so go ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay. With a plus six. Mm, oh, 12. At 12. You start to enter in what you assume to be a normal code algorithm. It locks you out. And so you have to spend an additional hour just undoing the damage that was caused by that first initial incorrect input. Ah, oh, tentacle fingers. <laughs> Lexi. Once the, the code has again been broken out and you are looking at all of these things, you need a disabled device because you have to, in sequence, shut down parts of the computer core whilst keeping other parts active at the same time. Oh, I don't have disabled device. Like, I can't use it. I'm going to say that you can use it, but you have a minus five. Okay. So that's intelligence. Seven. It's getting worse. <laughs> For the moment, the captain and Atura are in the dark as you accidentally oh. shut down the entire ship's internal lighting system. Wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> an additional hour has been added to the clock i need then from either one of you a forgery check as you are now attempting to make a virtual machine that the whoever is using the spike will be downloading rather than the actual contents of the machine so a forgery from either one of you Uh, I'll go for it. What? All right. <laughs> it's almost like I don't want to. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. It can only 13. go worse. 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13. 13 is a Some success. Oh. Oh. You lock right. it in. You lock it in and you're like, okay, we have two drives now. 
fake drives. We think this is going to work. So that is... You're currently sitting on 10 hours of work. Um, this has just cut one of those hours off, putting you down to nine. It means, Lexi, you are very lucky. You have to give me a repair check. Yeah. Because I wrote these out in order that they need to be done in, and this is the next one. That's 15. That is also a success. You crosswire the drives to make sure that data can flow one way and not the other. You are now down to eight hours. From either of you, I need a search check. We were just getting warmed up, huh? Right. <laughs> that was it. You're in the zone now. Have you got search? I have if you don't. I don't. Okay, that's it though. Ooh, 20. That is a success. Seven hours remain, and now it is up to Young Shao. You have to make a bluff check. For each of us, right? 14. 14 is a success. Not only do you set up the drives, you set them up convincingly. And so it is that after four hours of sweating it out, you now just have six hours of routine data setup, transfer, backup, redistribution. It does mean, however, that you will arrive in the planet an hour to go on the core. Unless you slow down. Is there such a thing as coffee in space? I, I'm not. <laughs> oh, sure. There are many beverages that you can imbibe in vast quantities. <laughs> yes, yes, I was just with. wondering. <laughs> She's just going to slap like Shao on the back. Kind of thing, probably quite hard. Oh. But, ah, I did it. Ah, oh, that was great. I like that bit that you did there at the end with the, the oh, that was genius. I'm going to go get some coffee. I think we need it. Oh, coffee. Mm. Huh. I wish I'd rather have extra. tea. Right. A little extra. Okay, right. Yeah. No problem. Right. That sounds good. Captain Atura, the two of you, it, it, is there something? between the two or, or is it just two comrades <laughs> quietly I have to confess she is my crew member <laughs> <laughs> oh there we go there we go when you ask for a status report you are still now well you are three hours away from the planet um, and they inform me that it's going to take them another four hours to finish up the job do you want to try and land without the computer? Because that's going to require quite an interesting piloting check. It's the old-fashioned way. Um, or are you going to slow down and not yet land, which may be considered as slightly odd? I don't know whether she's frozen again or whether she's to be grin. <laughs> I think it's okay. just to be grin this time around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did something like this in an adjacent um, sci-fi game. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, it's your call. Okay. Let's, uh, let's slow down, but let's flicker the engines a little bit. Hmm. Just to make it look like we're having power problems. I love your finesse. <laughs> it's not a problem. You flicker the engines uh, and you slow the craft down so you will arrive now about half an hour after the two uh, hackers have finished uh, slicing the computer. There is an incoming communications from the planet's surface, however. This is not unexpected. <laughs> Captain, apparently you're the one who's answering the call. Okay. Let's do this. Well, I'm going to I'm going to answer the call and go, "Oh, 
thank goodness we're gonna need some parts here or something because our engine's not working and we're on the way to tattooing it it ain't working right on my master requires whether you intend to dock or not, and if you do so, do you have the credits to pay for repairs? Says a voice over the communications. That depends how much are repairs. You hear the clicking language. He comes back. My master says that it is unclear as he is uncertain of the extent of the repairs that need to be conducted to your vessel. Well, how about we land, prorate it, and then if it's too much, I'll just leave you a little something for your more, trouble. More translation. He turns back. My master says that is acceptable. He should warn you, however, sir, that if you do choose to land and are unable to pay for the repairs, you will be fed to the great beasts out in the wastelands. Huh. You got a great beast, too? Oh, I remember my, my home. We had great beasts left and right. Tell him he's on. There's some clicking. Then, if I may say so, sir, the great beasts out in the wasteland are large mechanical droids designed for ripping apart starships. Are they the same on your planet? No, ours are more fleshy clawed fur you are cleared to land at docking bay four the comms and then i'm going to off transmission yeah absolutely you manage to finish up your core programming and your computer comes back online everything seems absolutely fine wiss i want you to roll a d20 with me please okay 17. Okay. It's not the same number that I got. And that's lucky because I got a one. <laughs> As the computer flickers back to life, your diary entries are all automatically saved. They are not lost as the core is rebooted multiple times. Oh, good. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you land on... It would be a disaster if I was not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there is a private communications for you, Wiss. Oh, I, I take it. Okay. The little hologram pops up of your uh, friend, and uh, he's in his Jedi robes. It is Aelmar Valona. His robes are being blown about quite dramatically, as uh, he's obviously standing somewhere in an alcove. He leans in and he says, Is that you? Yes, I thought I felt a presence. Y yes, it's, it's me. Hello, friend. H how are you? What has brought you to Kada? Well, we we have a little problem. We may be chased by a Sith. I I'm sorry. Did you say a Sith? Yes, I I did, and I know it's crazy, but uh, that's real. I met a Sith, and she is chasing us. H have you reported this to your master? Uh, I didn't have a time. Are you sure she's following you? Well, we, we tried to um, lose her. Maybe maybe he, she won't find us that quickly. I think it would be best if we were to meet up. Will it be possible for you to disembark? Yes, for sure. There's no problem. I, I can disembark and, and go wherever. I will meet you at Hutz Canyon. Anyone in town will be able to show you where that is. Shall we say in five hours? Yes, no problem. We can meet there. The image flickers for a moment. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. He disappears. Uh, I, I will go 
to the crew and tell them uh, that uh, I uh, talked with my friend and uh, he said we should meet in uh, Hats Canyon in five hours. Your core conversion is complete. Your docking is complete. The planet beyond is red and dusty. You can see just piles of dead starships all around you, some being wrecked and pulled apart by these gigantic droids which walk around almost like gorillas on their knuckles until they lift their hands up. You can see that these are large cutting claws that just rip into the sides of ships and just pull great big chunks out and then load them onto their back and then they knuckle towards larger, they look like hover trucks with massive, massive uh, trucks at the back. They unload the metal into that. These then zip off between the piles of, of destroyed starships. Every now and again, you see little creatures scurrying about the wreckage. You realize they probably related to Jawa in some shape or fashion. You're not entirely sure. But there are clear track lights leading to a domed structure, which is clearly the central coordinated space. There are a couple other ships that are docked in states of repair. You can see repair cradles are attached to them as they are attempting to, to, to fix them up. There is a figure that is walking out of the domed hut. This is most likely the station controller who has come to effectively get your payment for docking and then to start assessing your ship. What are you guys doing? I'll approach him and to work out the payments and stuff. All right. He looks at your ship. He looks at you. Uh, without doing a full inspection, I would say that probably uh, your docking fees will be 150 a day. And I'll do a full analysis of your ship. And if it's within... What I suspect you're looking at anywhere between five and thirty thousand. Oh. <clears throat> What's wrong with this ship? Oh. What's wrong with it? That's quite a sum. I mean, isn't it's... it better to buy a new ship? <laughs> <laughs> that is just rude. <coughs> well, it, it would What's be cheaper than repairing it. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't know what you're saying. Nothing to repair. For the, should we just have them do a check just to see, but not perform any work yet? Would, would you be willing to just check our ship out? Yeah, we'll do analysis of the ship, yeah. Okay, but before performing any labor. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. We won't do anything until you show us the money. Great. So show us the money for the docking fee. About that, 150 for a single day on this pier? Uh, that seems a bit steep to me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an appraise check as you try okay. and negotiate him. Oh. 19. Well, you start to haggle, and uh, you can roll me a 1d10. Ooh. Mm, seven. You pay 150 credits for seven days docking. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's good, that's good. Pleasure doing business with you. If I'm honest with you, you're the first ship to come here in over three months, so it's not like the pad's being used, eh? <laughs> But yes, you have docking for seven days at 150 credits. Are you all heading into the station? I see all the slap on the back again as <laughs> she walks past. <laughs> She's just like, is it much better this time? You're learning. Good. Thank you. He's got a big smile on his face. Over at me, he's back. Captain Zip. Oh. Look at this place. Really nice place you got here. Nice business. Lovely view. I mean, the aesthetic of it alone is just interesting. 
as droids rip ships apart, there's flare ups, red dust everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it might just look at the bright side. Yeah, one man's junk is another man's treasure, as they say, huh? Yeah, there's probably a lot of credits in it, so hey, they're the fools for losing it. He immediately takes a shine to you, but he's going to go and give you a ship a once over. So you're heading into the dome? Yes. Okay, Lexi, you're going in as well? Yeah, I think it's best if we all kind of stick yeah, together. I think it's, is it fair to say everyone's going in? Gearing up first. Oh, okay. Uh, there yeah, is... what are the weapon restrictions on this planet? He looks at you. You want to shoot someone in the station? No, outside the station. Yeah, so if somebody wants to shoot us, are we allowed to at least shoot back? That would be only fair in my mind. If you shoot at me, I will kill you. Wait, I hey, I like you. I'm not going to shoot you ever. That's good. <laughs> then you see him tap his comm and quietly mutter something into it as you all walk into the station heavily armed. I think I've just got my pistol. Yeah. I've left my rifle, just the pistol strapped to my side. All right. The interior of the station looks as if they've basically just put a dome over the exterior. There's just piles of junk everywhere. There are a few traders wandering around, sort of poking bits of debris, looking for the gems in amongst this garbage. But you're fairly certain that unless you are looking for something that is 500 years old... Yeah, not going to find anything of value in here. At least not unless you spend days scouring through the stuff. Uh, and you can see there are lots of little Jawa moving around, putting little carts together of stuff. But it's all it's all just scrap. By the way, uh, do I have the crystal I took from the droid after he, he decoded it? Well, you have the six the six crystal. Where are you leaving them? That's a good question, actually. Well, we left five of them on the ship one is uh, connected to the computer and the last one i have on myself all right wait hang on that's seven yeah so i'm gonna say that there's there's six in total so you got one with the droid yeah, so fi five are on the ship yes mm -hmm. one is in my pocket all right okay everyone happy with that uh i'm not <laughs> yeah, I don't think we should be walking around with the crystals either. Like, to this say. guy reminds me a lot of myself, and I'll tell you this right now: if I was given a chance, and you weren't my crew, I'd rob you blind. Well, I, I, I'm just I, being I, honest. Yes, I know, but I'm meeting my friend here, and I think he, it would be a good idea for him to look up at this crystal. Oh wait, no, you want to I mean, take all the crystals off the ship? Yeah. Just take all of them? Not just one? I wouldn't trust them around anybody. They're safer mm. with us than left on the ship. That may, may, that may be a good idea to just have them on us. All right. So who's carrying two? Do we... Maybe we should just distribute them between ourselves. Maybe that will be a good yeah. idea. Rather than, rather than uh, one yeah, so who's thing. carrying? So someone's gonna have to carry two because there's only five of us and six crystals. Mm. Hmm. There is a whistle from your droid. He volunteers to carry a crystal. No one asked him if he wanted to carry a crystal, but he would carry a crystal. And um, no, you're with us. <clears throat> I, I will give him one. <laughs> He takes it and his little compartment flap opens and he puts it in his compartment flap and slaps it shut <clears throat> and then gives you a little salute. <laughs> Always dependable. Oh, we've lost control over who's where. where oh, no. Okay. It's all right. The worst happened. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Not a problem. We'll carry on. We'll just remember who's who. Mm. There you go. I dropped oh. up at, at who's carrying two. Uh, the Nobody. Droid. The droid took one. Yeah. 
<laughs> L7 <laughs> took one. <laughs> right. Yes. The oh. station itself has a few very oh. grotty looking cantinas that you might find food and accommodation in. Um, there is an entertainment arcade, which uh, you guess the entertainment is avoiding picking up a contracted disease from whatever's coating ah. the surfaces of very old gaming stations and things. <clears throat> um, it's, yeah, it hasn't been looked at. You also realize that it's probably a collection of gaming stations that have been taken from ships that have been decommissioned mm -hmm. and destroyed. So uh yeah that's about it so there are a few people uh, milling around other than that it's just debris where we're we supposed to meet your friend at it's huts canyon uh, i think we will need some kind of transportation to get there and and i don't even know where it is we well, let's ask just ask them. some yes let's just ask somebody Okay, dokes. Do you want to ask a chower? Do you want to ask a grungy-looking human kid? Do you want to watch? Uh, ask a grizzly, kind of hairy-looking. It could be a Wookiee, but if it is, someone shaved a lot of hair off of it. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure exactly what species that one is. Um, or do you want to ask a Zabraki who's sitting there looking like all Zabraki? angry mean and with his horns and facial tattoos very indicative of his species uh, i'm not really good at this <laughs> who's the negotiator of the party depends on how blunt you want it to be i have a bonus <laughs> to diplomacy but other than that <clears throat> Well, I, I mean, I don't know what else going to do with it. So I just wander over to the Zabraki. <laughs> you go to the Zabraki. Okay. Yeah. As you approach, he kind of looks you up and down. He's wearing dirty overalls. He's obviously somebody who works here. He looks at you. All right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Hot Canyon. What about it? Where is that? It's out. Ah, where? Oh, wait, hang on a second. What? Mm, I, I kind of just slipped my gold piece. How does, like, how does, how you, does... You, you flash, you flash a credit <laughs> yeah. <stick. laughs> yeah. yeah, I just kind of tell it between my fingers and I'm just like, where would that be then? <laughs> he looks at the credit stick, he looks at you. You have to follow to the north, but you won't want to go there on your own if you've not been before. Oh, I'm not on my own. It's fine. You've been to Kedah before? No, not to Kedah. I'm not on my own. Uh, have your companions been to Kedah? Probably not. I mean, I'm used, to the, wild I'm used to the wilderness. I, I mean, I grew up in the it frontier, but other than that. Are you planning on walking towards Canyon? Well, how far is it? About 250 kilometres from here. What's that in like days? <laughs> Walking in days? Yeah, like 250 kilometers. <laughs> uh, it's about nine days walk. Or maybe, oh. maybe, maybe less if you if you hustle. I don't think we'll be walking. No. Uh, you got a skiff? No, it was a piece of junk. We tried. <laughs> I'll take you to Hot's Canyon. I know it. I'll take oh. you on my skiff. I can accommodate six folk. We'll get there in about an hour, give or take. Well, we we have five and one droid. There's plenty of room for that, if you all uh, want to come along. I think you probably help out with the, well, things. He's a helpful little fella, pat him on the head. There's that happy little whistle that all the uh, <laughs> droids give out. What would you charge for a trip like that? He looks the five of you up and down. He does not seem to work out what you are other than here. <laughs> There's no immediately identifying stuff. Um, tell you what. 
You help me load my cargo onto the skiff. I'll mm -hmm. take you there free. It's on my way anyway. Oh, that's very nice of you. All right. Head on <clears> over <throat> to dock number seven. There'll be several large crates just off of the skiff's bow. You load them in there. I'll join you shortly. I've got to finish up business here. Oh, what's your name, by the way? He looks at you. He looks at everybody else. Everybody can give me a sense motive check. Eight. Nineteen. Fifteen. Uh, when he tells you his name... His ne he says, name's Skeev. You know he's lying completely. Those of you that have got about 14. Right, well, my name's Jeff, so uh, good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, Jeff. I'm Sal. She just <laughs> elbows him right in the ribs. <laughs> What do you tell her I caught this? <laughs> I love this game. Well, <laughs> do you head on over to port seven, bay seven? Uh, there are indeed several large orange canisters sitting in front of a rather beaten up skiff. You can see the skiff, uh, unlike normal skiffs, which have an open deck and just railings and basic seating that this skiff has got quite a lot of metal plating going over the top of it making a canopy of sorts uh, and it almost looks like it's a tank except that there are spaces where you'll be able to see out of and quite easily fire blasters out of uh, for that matter it's not a bad really. I mean it's a bit old but could have done with one of these back in the frontier. <clears throat> so, are, are we out of range of our friend? Oh, yes. He left you mm -hmm. to go and sort out his business. So, this is either a trap, those aren't his canisters, or this is a trap. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I think we, we made a good deal right there. That's the problem. You made a good deal. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> Sometimes good. people are just nice, you know. I mean, even, I'm pretty even nice if he too. Is doing something illegal, I don't really care. You reckon he's saving his ship? Skiff. Well, we could just. If not, we've just loaded somebody else's. But are you sure you're a oh, Jedi? Yeah. Like, I'm really having doubts about this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why his friend is already a Jedi. I sense much conflict in you, young Padawan. <laughs> much anger and deception. <laughs> well, even if it is a trap, I mean, there's five of us and one of him. Itora discharges her shock button like vroom, vroom. Yep. Question. <laughs> yes. Do I still have my power pack and that beeping device? <laughs> uh I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to roll a D twenty on that one. <laughs> please, 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 please. Are you pardon? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, that's good enough. Uh you do have it. <laughs> The captain on that station was so shocked with this thing that as you were walking away, he just had handed it back to you. Um, okay. I'm going to plug my powder pack. My only one is my blaster. <laughs> well, at least now you can shoot again. That's brilliant. That's great. Okay. I have extras. I have extras. Do you start loading the uh, orange canisters? Yes. All right. Well, the is there any kind of identifier yes, on them? Yeah. Is there any kind of identifier on the canisters? Uh, or... Yes, the canisters are highly explosive <laughs> fuel cells. Oh. oh. Great. Nice. 
As you are halfway through loading these <laughs> orange canisters, the door to the hangar opens, and this really burly-looking oh, oh. Wookiee just barges in. Most of his hair has been plaited in these very intricate kind of shapes. Very black, 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 black hair. And he steps forward, he looks at all of you and goes, Mmm! Which... He looks down at you. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, his his aggression seems to, to pause. Do you try and encourage his interest? Itura? I'm going to plate his fur. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a sensitive question. Are you trying to bluff him? Or are you actually trying to woo him? No, I'm just, it's furry. I like it. Give me a diplomacy check then. That's fair. <laughs> Ooh, that uses what? Charisma. Uh, diplomacy is charisma, yeah. That would be a three. You're not scratching his kneecap. Um, <laughs> he starts to growl at you. And he does not seem happy at all. Um, Wookie is one of those strange languages which some people just naturally can speak and some people can't. Uh, your droid. Does anyone speak Wookie? No, I'm not. No. Uh, L7 starts to whistle up. Someone speaks droid, I hope. Anyone? <laughs> droid? I took that you got droid yes Speak? you're right l7 translates uh because l7 speaks wiki he was on uh kashik once um and he translates he says he wants to know who the captain is so zep is gonna look around <sighs> <laughs> The Wookiee glares at you and growls some more things, which sounds very, very violent. L7 rotates on his little wheel. He wants to know if you're in the employ of someone called Lajan. Ooh. Spiky head dude. Has a lot of uh, tattoos. <laughs> yes. Employee's a strong word. More like we just need a ride and he told us to do something for a ride. <laughs> the droid wheels around and makes a series of gobbled bleeps back to the Wookiee. The Wookiee looks at the droid, looks at you, looks back at the droid, snarls something, turns and then leaves. The droid rotates back and says, I translated roughly what you said that you are not employed by John that is correct isn't it captain we're not employed by him we're I don't see any of my worker permits with him the droid whistles happily he feels he has done his duty as best he can the Wookiee has left and he sort of gives you a glaring look over his shoulder uh, Itura, as he leaves. Uh, yes, it was not a let's see each other later look. It was a I will rip your arms off look oh. as he stalks out. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been three minutes and Skeeve walks into the hangar. He is wearing a heavy hood which completely covers his face and he seems to stick to the shadows. Anyone can give me a spot check as he's making his way towards the skiff. Okay. Did anyone get above 15? 23. 18. Nope. Okay, dokes. The two of you, uh, Itura and um, Lexi, you notice that he's keeping his hood in such a way that all of the security cameras where they're positioned 
as they turn to him, he kind of does this series of rotations, keeping his hood always to the cameras until he gets to the actual skiff side itself, whereupon he climbs in and leans back. Are you coming or not? We need to leave now. Not before the Wookiee comes back. I have very nice. no idea what you're talking about. He I'll be honest, I have no the... idea what you're talking about either. Let's just get in. <laughs> All right. Everybody climbs board? Yep. Yep. The great right doors the, <laughs> the great doors of the hangar open and the red blasting sands and winds open out. And he engages the skiff. The skiff starts leaving. As the skiff is pulling away, you see that large Wookiee come bursting in roaring and snarling and pointing at the ship. L7 turns to you and says, he is very unhappy. I believe this is the individual that he called the John. He wants us to come back. We will, eventually. We come back when we deal with our stuff. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> you zoom out and the Wookiee snarling and sh sort of growling, he holds up this, to, clearly it's a long range communicator and he mentions something. You start to accelerate, the skiff starts to build up speed. From inside, Skeev says, I'd suggest you sit down. We're about to engage maximum speed. We're going to be going for a couple... Uh, well, at least an hour you might make yourself comfortable and if you've got weaponry you might well check that make sure it's working I, I'm checking if my lightsaber is working <laughs> <laughs> there's a hole in the roof there's a hole in the roof yeah I think it's working <laughs> you're busy checking your lightsaber the skiff starts to accelerate even more as she's building up to her maximum speed it's at that point that who's sitting in the front so it's two 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 who are the two in the front i guess she so. wanted oh okay if you want to you can then <laughs> well there's two two seats in the front so oh so i'd Lexi be next to the canisters all right so lexi and the captain in the front yeah okay as you are moving forward one of those massive gorilla droids suddenly steps into the middle of the road and lifts up its claw towards the skiff oh dear hold on <laughs> hold on <laughs> and that's where we end our session <laughs> We're out of time. Oh. Maybe just go. assist in a robbery. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Well, the captain said it was a trap. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if this is a trap or, yes, just an assist. It was either a trap, or the cancer don't belong to them, or oh, it's a trap. That's right. That's right. That's oh, right. both of those things. <laughs> the Wookiee should have been nicer. Trap. Yeah. <laughs> the Wookiee should have been nicer. Oh my goodness. Yeah, maybe the Wookiee should have been nicer. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you had fun. Um, yes. I, 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 I completely lost track of the time. I was I was just playing. I looked up and I'm like, what time did we start? My brain's going backwards. I'm like, we played for three hours. It's already been three hours. Yeah. But we, we've, there's so much still to do. We've, we've, we've got more to do. So, uh, <laughs> as long as you guys had fun, what? Uh, let's do let's do this exercise because it was quite fun. So, <laughs> randomly starting, I'm going to roll a die. Um, I right, count as I'm going to with one. So, one, two, three, four. So, Wiss, what was your favorite moment in tonight's game? Oh, there was so much of it. <laughs> uh, uh, if I can, I can only pick one. That, yes. Then I think it's the beginning with the, the seed lady, for sure. <laughs> oh, when she revealed herself. Yeah, as... And and when we intimidated the guard, guards, but then she just. <laughs> <laughs> when he yes, absolutely, not a lot of courage in that. Uh, 
<laughs> young uh, Padawan. But maybe that's why you live oh. live, live as long as, as you have. Uh, Shao, what was your favorite moment of the game? Um, I think when you... Uh, well, first on that scene with the lady, with the Sith, yes. uh, and you were describing the dark side, yes. I literally got the chills. Like That was like, oh man, I feel the dark side. <laughs> 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 but but uh, I think my favorite was um, when you were playing um, the new droid. I forgot his name already. AB3. Yeah. Abe. 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 Yeah. <laughs> he had some good uh, one-liners for him. Uh, uh, said something about, well, you better paint the whole ship. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that, was... <laughs> uh, that was cool. Captain Zepp? <laughs> favorite moment? Uh, same question. Yeah, it's favorite moment. I, I just, I absolutely love Itora's whole going along with everything crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is probably my favorite highlight of this of this session is just her yes That's, there was that moment where you both realized you could blow up the nebula that there was just that was, that was <laughs> i agree I absolutely agree um i think my favorite moment gosh it's tricky to say because there were so many catastrophic decisions that were made um, no, I think my favorite moment has to be it has to come from Atura when she's like, My lips are sealed. And then 10 seconds later, she yeah. shouts out the entire <laughs> list of her crew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my wisdom is literally minus one, yeah. and my will save is a, a ground zero. No, I, I love that. I thought that was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Um, let's see your favorite uh, moment. Um. I think mine was, was just uh, Wiss just being the most un-Jedi Jedi ever. <laughs> it was just like, we'll oh, oh, <laughs> just steal it. Just wanting to steal everything. <laughs> 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 like, the sick with <laughs> He's playing the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we did leave money on the desk, right? So, that is true. That is, true. Yeah. That is true. Although that was not at the Jedi's urging. That was at Shao's <laughs> urging. So. <laughs> um, there we go. And Itura, your favorite moment? I don't know. I, I think I have three. Like the whole shouting in the intercom. <laughs> that was magnificent. Oh, and no. Abe. I love Abe. He's so funky. He's so, so sassy. Such yeah. sass. Yeah. But I, I, what I really love is like the relationship that's like what we're establishing with the captain and Itura. Like, I said, yeah. know what's the deal? But I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they're like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna blow it up. <laughs> it feels like a crew. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It absolutely does. Yep. It does. There we go. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you again in two weeks' time. Yeah.